A recent study by a research group called Driver Distraction found the number one road safety crisis facing Americans today. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, crashes caused by distracted drivers have reached an all-time high, with texting described as the most alarming distraction. Four years ago, Florida lawmakers took steps to make our roads safer by passing what they call Florida's ban on texting while driving. In our latest impact check, Florida 24 investigative reporter Katie Legrone is examining if this law is having its intended effect. Just 50 miles north of Tampa in the small town of Brooksville. And then there's a crashing metal sound a split second and it goes black. Jordan and Brooke Shear. I remember hearing a noise. Recently took the stand. He drove right into the back of the Mazda CX-5. In a criminal trial that got little attention, but is destined to have extraordinary impact. I turned around and I looked at Logan. After three and a half days of emotional testimony. <laughs> My kid was blue <laughs> with blood running down his nose. And just two hours of deliberation. The defendant is guilty of reckless driving causing serious bodily injury. The couple's years long fight for closure ended when a jury found 39 year old Gregory Andriotis guilty of recklessly causing this 2016 deadly crash on I-75 in Hernando County distracted by his cell phone. Andriotis slammed so fast and so hard into the back of the shears, their family's SUV nearly pancaked. While the case represents the first cell phone related distracted driving case to go to trial in Florida, the wreck became a symbol of the dangers of distracted driving and inspired new state laws banning texting and driving. But not before robbing the Shears' nine-year-old son, Logan, of a life he was just beginning to live. I always knew Logan was going to do something big for this world. Because I'm happy. But the hard part is knowing that it's got to be from the other side. Three years after Logan's death, texting and driving in Florida became a primary offense. Now, four years later, is it having much of an impact? This is what we call a clunky law. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd is known for his honest on-camera quips about crazy Florida crime. If that just doesn't rip the button off of your shirt. Florida's texting and driving law gets him just as fired up. I think it's not worth mammary glands on a boar hog. It's useless. Useless? It's useless. That's because he says Florida's ban on texting while driving might as well be called the law of exceptions. The current statute makes all sorts of them. Drivers who are stopped can text. Navigation apps are also okay. And if you're suspected of texting and driving, the law even gives you a pass from handing your phone over to police to prove it. They created this law in this manner so that Florida law enforcement officers would not write many violations. And so how is that not a failure? Well, I don't call it a failure. You can. Between 2019 and 2021, state data shows distracted driving caused at least 110,000 crashes in Florida, nearly 1,000 of them fatal. But according to statewide totals, starting in July 2019 when the state's new texting and driving law took effect, and through 2021, Florida law enforcement agencies issued a total of just over 8,500 citations for texting and driving. In a state with some 15 million licensed drivers at the time, that's equivalent to just about nine tickets per day statewide with several agencies including sheriff's departments not issuing a single ticket in a 12-month period according to these reports that's just ridiculous for Gwendolyn Reese the law and its failure is personal she was at the beginning of her life her niece Levon was a senior at FSU in 2015 when she was killed instantly after being struck by a driver texting and driving Reese lobbied in Tallahassee for the state law she knew wasn't strong enough even then. We said, okay, this is not what we want, but it's better than nothing. In fact, when it comes to texting and driving laws across the country, Florida is considered to have one of the weakest, with fines among the lowest, just 30 bucks for your first offense. In New Jersey, penalties for texting and driving start at $200. When the laws are like they are, why do I expect it to make a difference? One answer, hands-free regulation, which bans drivers from using handheld devices anytime they're behind the wheel. 
25 states have already adopted the law. Former GM executive Stephen Kiefer actively helped pass the law in nearly half of those states. All the states that we've um, been successful with these laws, the uh, crashes and deaths go down 10 to 20 percent. It's not a perfect solution, but it is a good start. Kiefer started the Kiefer Foundation after losing his own son Mitchell to a distracted driver on her cell when she rear-ended him. We're trying hard to... Uh, change the world in his honor. Kiefer, who recently moved to Florida, is now in the early stages of getting Florida to go hands-free too. It won't be easy. Privacy and freedom will likely be issues that stir debate here. Even when victims and law enforcement we spoke with say what's on the books now is far. Unless everything is covered, then nothing is safe. From working. It doesn't keep the community safe. It's hard, it's really difficult being in our position not to just be angry. There's so much that they could do if they dared to do it. Advocates tell us they will be meeting with lawmakers this summer in hopes of getting a bill ready for next legislative session. I'm Katie Legrone for the Florida 24 Network.